Okay, kia ora everyone. Is anybody there? Just give me a signal to let me know that somebody's there and we can kick into it. Kia ora everybody and sorry for being late again. What What's happening is, is that when I turn my data on, I, I literally sit there through 10 minutes of pinging. Um, many of you will know that I've started to uh, reply to a lot of messages, but what's happening is when I'm doing that, um, I, I turn my phone off so I'm not I'm not distracted. And what's happening when I turn the data on back on my phone, it just just goes completely nuts. It's just gone. It's just stopped after 10 minutes of constant pinging and messaging. And I didn't want to do that um, with today's broadcast. So please, all of you out there, um, please. Um, um, if you, you make comments and that, but don't don't send me messages until the until the broadcast is finished, so that way I can um, focus on what we're doing here. But anyway, welcome everybody. Kia ora tato. It's uh, what is it Sunday here, and it's uh, just after four o'clock. So I said I was going to start at four o'clock, and as usual, I have issues with my um, with my Facebook account, and uh, and just making sure that. Uh, I can get on live and all that, but it seems to be working so far. Can I just have someone tell me that they can hear me okay, please? Kia ora, hori, hori ana, kia ora. Can you all hear me okay out there? I just don't want to get started and have people not be able to hear me, that's all. Waiting for some comments. Yep, oh yep, I'm starting to get some love hearts, so that's a, that's a, kia ora David. Kia ora bro. Yep, thank you David. Thank you Danielle, kia ora. So anyway, before we crack into it, welcome, uh, tēnā no tātou katoa, nei mai haru mai whakatau mai rā, ki te kōrero o tēnei wā, uh, nō reira, e mihi, e mihi, e mihi mai koutou katoa. Thank you everybody, welcome to this, uh, today's quick broadcast. Well, it's been another week of outstanding um, um, activities, and uh, man, it just, the party keeps going down in Parliament, doesn't it? Um, we've got a bit of ground to cover today, and in fact, I just want to thank all of you for sending me the amazing information that um, uh, all the information that you do it's it's quite amazing thank you very much and it's always greatly appreciated um, what I started to do to do last night I actually started at last to to res to go through all the messengers messages that I'm getting um, I've probably done about a probably about a hundred and something messages in the last um, last few hours and I'm really doing my best because it's important to me to, to respond to as many of you as possible because everyone's valuable. We all mean something. Every one of us is important um, and we're all God's children. So it really is important to me that I um, that I get to each of you. So if I haven't yet, please just um, keep in mind that I'll do my best to get to you. Before we crack into it um, and we start going through these points that I've got here, I just want to share a quote with you from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. That's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, and it says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. So what that means is, I'll say that again, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine understanding, thine own understanding. And for me, what that means is making sure that everything I say is truthful, um, and has, has a reference back to uh, my faith as a, um, as a uh, Maori Christian, as a Christian. So I just wanted to shit kick that off today. So that's the basis that I'm doing things. I consult everything uh, uh, that I say and I do. Before I do it, I start off with prayer and just to make sure that um, I'm straight as well, eh? That's important. Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to start off with some of the um, some of the uh, the points that we touched on last week. But man, it's been it's been an incredible week. First one is yes, last uh, the week before last, New Zealand's first MP, Tracy Martin introduced the, um, the, what did they call it, the internet filtering bill. And this bill is essentially, kia ora Craig, this, uh, this bill is essentially, a, it's censorship. There's really no other way to describe it. It's censorship. So really the government has, has created a very broad basis to interpret this uh, and apply this, this bill, this law. And it's basically anything that the government defines as um, objectionable. Okay, so what does it really mean? Objectionable, because of course objectionable is is subjective. It could be uh, kia ora Elizabeth. It could be um, that they don't like the way I said something. It could be you know, but they don't they don't like what sort of brand of water I'm drinking. It could be anything. So that's really scary when you get a government that says that that if they object or find your material that you have in your any of your digital communications or social media platforms, if they define it as um, 
has been objectionable, then it's gone. But the interesting thing within that, though, they've got some they've got some pretty strong punitive measures that they will take. Kia ora, Hillary. Um, and that is, if you're a business, they'll give you three warnings, okay? Warning one, take it down. Warning two, take it down. What happens when you get to warning two? They'll start to apply a foot, some sort of filter where they will limit the reach and the, and the, uh, and the broadcast range of what you're, what you're saying. And then the third time, they'll take it down and then you risk getting a fine of up to uh, $300,000, which is a lot of money. So we need to ask ourselves, why the heck have we got this here? Now, as I said the other day in my broadcast, I'm not talking about, you know, not preventing, you know, sensible stuff online, you know, you know, bad pornography, uh, pornography, um, you know, anything harmful to kids and all that. Well, you know, just let's be sensible about this. So, you know, um, I, I admit that that sort of stuff there, you know, that promotes hurting people, killing people, that needs to be censored and that needs to be managed. I mean, any one of us can agree with that. But this is, again, just like the COVID health response bill, there's not enough perimeters around it that we, that I'm aware of anyway, after looking at it, and it's very it's a very broad base. So why is a New Zealand First MP, aka Ma, um, Tracy Martin, bringing this in? Well, I was doing some um, some uh, YouTube surfing as I do to, to really see what's out there, and hey presto, as I half expected, the Justin Trudeau government, which is really a carbon copy of Jacinda's government here is doing the same thing. They've now brought in a, um, a, a an entire censorship bill as well, almost exactly the same. And, and, and beware, of course, that the that the Canadian government is based, the parliament is based on a similar system, if not the same system as us, based on the old um, Westminster system and also blending in the MMP part into it. So it's very similar. But his government, which is a, a uh, liberal government, have also brought in this. So what are we seeing here on a global basis? We're seeing these young liberals like Trudeau, like Jacinda Ardern, that are creeping in these totalitarian laws. And what I would like to invite all of you to do is to send a, a message to Tracy Martin question, questioning her why she is doing this. Because this is, you know, for me, what if I wanted to... Um, what if I wanted to publish my a Bible study or something? Are they going to find that objectionable? You know, how are they going to define the speech of that? Are they, are they going to consider that hate speech? So, you know, I'm, I'm really concerned about that. And we need to make sure that, that Tracy Martin is aware of that. But I find it interesting that Canada, with the Trudeau government, uh, are doing exactly the same thing there in Canada. Canadians are up in an uproar about it. They're not happy, happy with it. And they're protesting, so we need to do the same thing as well. Let's not sleep through this. Okay, moving on. BNZ is planning to go cashless. Now, if you remember, three weeks ago today, I did my first presentation on uh, on Agenda 21 and Agenda 30 and the entire um, plan to control every aspect of our lives. I had some people sort of say to me via, via messaging, oh, are you sure, Billy? <laughs> That they're going to control, um, you know, every aspect of our lives. I said, yep, just like I presented. If you haven't seen that, go through my Facebook posts and find that again. It was the uh, part one, uh, the big plan behind the crisis, where I unpacked all of the control mechanisms, mechanisms that the UN are putting out there to control us all, for my, for my finances, for my health, um, our food, our education, our military, our legal framework, our business framework. And basically our sovereignty, the UN framework would then become the central unit where all of our rights and uh, and freedoms are managed. Okay, So goodbye um, local accountability for us as Kiwis, as New Zealanders. It gets it gets controlled and maintained and, and, and managed through a central control mechanism, which is the United Nations and which is brought about through Agenda 21 and Agenda 30. But people are saying to me, well, how does this work with the with the financial systems. Well, number one, they need to clap. They then need to, excuse me, <laughs> doesn't stop. Uh, um, they need to collapse the financial system and they also need to to destroy the economies and we're going to go into that a bit, bit later. But BNZ announced this week that it plans to go cashless and that's, of course, in complete line with what's happening in Australia. You will remember that I did say in one of my other posts recently that the, that the Australian banks were already quite a way down the road of, of introducing a cashless, hand, cash, cashless handling policy. So what, what, all that, 
what would that mean to us? Well, basically, goodbye, obviously, going to the bank and getting your cash out. And, and what I would say, if that's what's going to happen, get your cash out of that bank and uh, do it pretty soon. So if BNZ are going to do that, go and get your cash out immediately because what you don't want to be left with is when you're dealing with a fractional reserve fiat money system and they've got your cash because what's happening is if um, inflation goes up, your dollar's going to be worth less and less and less and it could fall out of the bottom. So get your cash out of BNZ and put it somewhere else. But that's interesting though, and like, like I, it wasn't a prophecy, but like I said a couple of weeks ago, um, that this is where the Australian banks were heading. Well, of course, who, are, who is BNZ owned by? It's owned by foreign interests, of course, and some of them are Australian. And so this is now what we're starting to deal with, cashless society, because what they know is if you control the flow of food, if you can control the flow of money, you control the populations. So to all of you BNZ customers, and I'm one of them, um, we need to watch that really, really, really closely. Okay, now we're going to get into the murky world of investment and business. Well, Jacinda Ardern, she's been up to some really interesting things in this last week or so. But we're going to start with an international thing. Now, as many of you know out there, we are, we are all concerned with the rollout of 5G technology in Aotearoa here in New Zealand. And I always think after I post things cheap as I forgot to mention 5G, I forgot to mention 5G. That's not because 5G is not on my radar. It is hard on my radar. But I always get sort of overwhelmed with all these other topics that I forget to mention it. But 5G is of serious, um, of serious concern to me. And I did mention that on my first broadcast three weeks ago today. And uh, 5G, of course, is a, is a, is a electromagnetic frequency weapon system there's no 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 other way to describe it it's been in the military for years it's used as a as a field combat uh, weapon uh, some of my army brothers that are tuning in now know that for sure they've seen it and used it i mean even even now when we have our special forces jumping out of planes everything's you know sort of directed by um, by laser beam now so when you jump out of a plane in dark you can zoom in on, zoom in on the laser but one of the interesting things about the Huawei rollout in Aotearoa, New Zealand, is that the guy, the New Zealand um, lobbyist for this company, is a former chief of staff for, for you guessed it, for Jacinda Ardern. Um, now, apparently there's been a bit of to and fro around around the accuracy of the current relationship with the government, but one thing that cannot be debated is that um, G.F. Thompson, who's a professional lobbyist in, in, uh, in Parliament on behalf of... of um, of corporates, uh, just like they have in Washington D.C., he was a, he was the uh, chief of staff for Jacinda Ardern. He then goes to Huawei, and then hey presto, bang, you've got it. Hu Huawei has been completely approved to bring in the 5G system almost overnight, almost by stealth. And Chris Farfoy, the minister of um, telecommunications and digital communications, basically you know pushed all, all ahead. The interesting thing was, um, you know, how did they, how did that happen so quickly? You know, you know, what sort of due diligence was was done around Huawei? For th those of us that are concerned and have been watching this for some time, we all know that Huawei is a is a CCP Chinese Com Communist Party business. It was funded by an ex, -ex um, general of the uh, army. Was there such thing as a as an ex Chinese army general? Probably not. He's probably always always in there, and and it's been um, widely touted amongst uh, intelligence services from all around the world that Huawei is nothing but a, an arm of, an, of Chinese intelligence. Okay, so let's not be naive about this. So here we have Jacinda Ardern working with her former chief of staff, and it gets approved and, and almost overnight that Huawei can roll this out. Okay, but... The UK were going through the same process as well as other countries in the Five Eyes partnerships, uh, partnership, and I'll talk about that in a second. But what's happening is, is that um, the UK government under, under our mate Boris has, um, has basically, they've reversed, it came out today that they've reversed the decision that approved Huawei being able to roll out their 5G system throughout the UK. And that is really, really worth looking at. Why have they done that? It's because they know, they've looked into it, they've realised probably a couple of things because they do have people like Sasha Stone exposing the uh, the 5G rollout and its health impacts on humans and how bad it is for us. Um, but these these court cases coming to, going into councils all around the place 
um, against the rollout of 5G. So there's a huge amount of public pressure over there. And, uh, and I think what's happening with Boris, he's starting to pick up on that. So they've obviously had a change of political will. They've now reversed their decision to, um, uh, to allow Huawei to do this. But when you examine the Five Eyes partnership, okay, and, and who's in that partnership, basically all of them have now said no to Huawei be, being the, the 5G uh, partner to roll this out. New Zealand is the only country that's not, not reviewing that right now. Even the Australians are looking at it. Canadians are apparently procrastinating on it, but definitely America's out of it um, completely, of course. Um, in fact, in, in, in Canada, the interesting thing there, the, one of the North, North American um, CEOs is the daughter of the founder of, of Huawei, and she was arrested, and I think she's been deported back to China now. But New Zealand, again... We're the only one that's that's unreserved, unreservedly saying it's all KT Pai, it's all good, Huawei is all good. But why is that? Why are we the only partner in the Five Eyes partnership? And don't get me wrong, I don't necessarily necessarily agree with the Five Eyes partnership, but why are we the only one not seeing the um, not seeing the forest through the trees? Again, it's that to me it seems like it's that relationship between Jacinda and her communist and socialist. Um, you know, ideology, you know, fellows. You know, it's that connection again. You know, birds of a feather, what do they do? They stick together. So it's something that we need to be aware of. I mean, there's, there's, there's the great 5G um, group now that's working against 5G in Aotearoa. We need to keep that up, guys. We need to, we need to uh, keep sending letters into MPs, making their life uncomfortable. Um, it's interesting. I'd love to know who's, who's burning down these 5G towers. So if anyone wants to give me a private message on that, I'd be uh, be keen to know who's doing that. Anyhow, um, but an interesting thing the other day when I was driving to uh, to the Hawke's Bay, I was listening to this conversation on Talkback Radio on National Radio, and they were talking about the conspiracy around 5G. But who did they have talking? Well, they had a, the CEO of Telecom of Teleco, the Telecommunications Assistant of New Zealand. So this is the same guy that's getting paid by all the telecommunications companies to help smooth things over in the uh, in the telecommunications world in New Zealand. So is he is he objective? No. They then had the uh, so-called chief scientist of Jacinda's government. Would she be objective? No. And then they had the guy hosting it as well, who was definitely a left-leaning government supporting Juno. So was he objective? No. And then they had a guy, and this is a, this is a real crack up. They had a guy who was the professor. Listen to this: the professor of um, conspiracies from Waikato University, and he came out and, and talked about this is all just conspiracy and how bad it is. And that's you know, but they failed to mention things like the minister of environment in Belgium has got this technology banned, completely banned. And her statement, and I've seen it, she's got a long French-Belgium uh, name, she came out and said she was not prepared to roll out any such uh, uh, technology that could not be 100% verified without doubt that it didn't have a negative health impact. What an amazing politician. Why don't we have one like that here in Aotearoa? Why don't we have someone like this who came out and said, no, no 5G in Belgium, and she's come out and banned it? Why is there 180 scientists saying that this needs to be stopped? It's harmful to the public. It's a weapon system. It can be used against the people to make populations unwell and to think in a different way. 180 scientists. Why is the European Union, whose parliament is in Belgium and Brussels, now seriously consider blanketly prohibiting 5G? But good old New Zealand, Aotearoa, we're like rolling over and going, yep, Bring it on our populations, on our babies. So we need to, we need to have a good close look at that as well. So all these points, guys. Just I hope, I hope some of you have got, have got um, um, note, notepads and books and writing some of this stuff down. I know you can come back to the, to the, to the post and look at it, but make these notes because I need you to follow up on these as well. Okay, economics. So there's no doubt. Um, kia ora, Messi. Kia ora, Ida. Kia ora, Timuni. Um, there is no doubt that this COVID crisis has caused us massive, massive economic pain and destruction in our in our economy. 
um, the amount of people that have reached out to me that that are that are in pain themselves, they're hurt, um, they're struggling to see how they're going to survive the next few months. They've had their seven thousand dollars worth of grants. They've had some wages subsidies given to them for their staff, but it's not enough. And so jobs and keeping our money in our country, working for our people, is super important. Correct. A couple of weeks ago, the government comes out with a fifty billion dollar. Um, economic uh, budget and tied in with the economic recovery plan. 20 billion is un, unallocated, so that's just under 50% of the of the of the 50 billion is unbudgeted and unallocated, which is a major problem. We'll go into that in a second. But today, on the front page of the New Zealand Herald, it reads something like this: 371 million dollar Kiwi Rail contract handed to Chinese and South African owned companies costing a thousand local jobs, angering Fletchers and Downers, both iconic New Zealand companies. So let me say that again. This government has just handed $371 million worth of business, worth of contracts to foreign owned companies. One company owned by China, one company by, owned by South Africa. And I find that really hard to, I find that really hard to believe. I really, really do. It's um, it's costing about a thousand local jobs apparently, and and I just can't I can't get my head around that. So what is this government trying to do to us? What is it really trying to do? And this is again, we're going into the left and right discussion. Left is socialism, right is is we have nationalism and the free capital markets and the free and, and the capitalism and free markets. But what is this government trying to do? When we look at how they were starting to to propagate a plan around appointing this $50 billion. One thing that, that, that a good friend of mine, Bill, and I were talking about earlier, is that there was no, there was no sort of um, a council or committee of sector representatives from business and from the community there to talk to them and say, hey, look, um, let's work it out. Let's work out where this money needs to go, where, it needs to, where the money needs to be appointed so that more jobs can be arrived at and businesses can be saved and grow and using using this crisis as an opportunity because it doesn't need to all be bad right all be bad but where was that committee where was where was grant robertson sitting in a room full of 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 people who from the sme from the small medium enterprise sector and from big business sitting with him to say hey this is where we think the money can go to this is how we 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 best should work it out because if you think about it we know that our tourism industry is 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 flattened destroyed so what's going to happen, you know, when they say that we can go back into the cruise industry and the visiting of the ships when they get hundreds of ships suddenly wanting to turn up in Aotearoa in our ports? How the heck are they going to so-called protect us from a second wave of of um, of of virus infection and all this sort of stuff? So what we're not seeing is the is the is a robust plan about about how we're going to deal with these things. You know, you've got the health aspect, you've got the economic aspect. But the one thing I want to point out about this, and it's something that I learned a few years ago when I was working at ATED, when people used to talk more and more about, oh, you know, it's economic development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your economic development plan? But I got the understanding that bureaucrats really don't understand what economic development is. And I'll tell you what tells me this, because whenever they looked at economic development and mentioned it and used the term, it was always like that was the that was the that was the pathway. That was, you know, just say something's economic development. And, we'll do, and it'll all happen. Well, no, economic development is the outcome. But what is the pathway to economic development? It's good business. Full stop, period, no argument, no debate. Good business leads to economic development. Whether it's, whether it's the Marakai uh, Māori um, food growing project I'm working on, whether it's someone else working on, working on um, you know, creating new business to sell arts and crafts, whether it's you name it, any commodity, any business sector, what makes economic development happen is when we have good business. So, you know, that's what we need to see. And I would have felt more comfortable in reflection if Grant Robinson had said, right, before we announce this budget, we're going to get all the people from different business sectors to come in and talk to us, and we're going we're gonna to work this out together and see how we can best appropriate this $50 billion. But instead, no, they announced $30 billion. We don't know, you know, we don't know what the allocations are looking like. I'm working with a multiple different groups that are 
that are applying for some of this funding to to do really good things and they don't know what's happening with it they don't know they don't they're not getting the right responses they're lost as to where things are at and that's a real problem i know that the, that the agencies are getting really slammed and i do do want to say that i feel for them and i do know that it takes time to work through these things but you know the the overall philosophy on how that how those the budgets are allocated is probably what we need to keep our eye on because it, it doesn't seem to make any sense okay still staying along the lines of business and uh, the murky world of Jacinda Ardern and her government doing doing funny things in business um, we heard a strong strong rumor all last week that Bill Gates was in New Zealand in fact that rumors have been floating around for a good couple of weeks now that Bill Gates was here in Aotearoa there was a just adding fuel to that fire there was a journalist who did a story last week and I forget one of the one of the papers where it came out of um, but apparently Bill Gates had been over in, in Waiheke Island along with a whole bunch of other billionaires that fly into the Auckland International Airport on their private jets get onto a helicopter or a small plane waiting for them and they fly to Waiheke but I've been we were hearing all last week especially through contacts that Bill Gates had um, had come to New Zealand he had had a an unverified meeting at Auckland Council to look at a facility for a vaccination company or a data cloud management um, infrastructure company. You know, okay, really simply looking at it, because I'm a meat and, pota meat and potatoes guy, or a vegetarian guy, I should say, um, if Bill Gates is on the level, if Bill Gates is on the straight up and down, why is, he, why is it so secretive? Why is it so secretive that he would come here and to meet with our government? No doubt he would have been in Wellington and would have met Jacinda, who there's lots of lovely photos with Jacinda with Bill and Melinda Gates. So he would have definitely have jumped in his private jet and gone down to, to Wellington to meet all the whanau at the Beehive. Why is this done quietly? Why is this done in stealth if it was all legitimate and if everything was okay? Why is this, guys? And this, again, just just... You know, raises all the red flags, doesn't it? It just tells us that that this that we need to keep our eyes open. And also around this this thing last week that we mentioned as well that that the New Zealand government had given thirty seven million dollars to a New Zealand um, vaccine development and research company. You know, if indeed Bill Gates is one of the one of the one of the partners in this. Why the heck are we giving any business that he owns $37 million of your and my taxpayer money? These are, good, these are really good questions we need to, we need to uh, answer. And by the way, thanks to Amber for getting my letter to Jacinda Ardern, the one that I posted last week. It's had almost 700 shares, which is blowing me away. Um, and I have, well, I'm waiting for a response to that because I'm sure I'm not going to get one. Okay, let's talk about... Trevor Mallard, Speaker of the House, the unspeakable speaker, I called him today. I thought that was quite clever, the unspeakable speaker. Um, Trevor Mallard, well, okay, so here we have a guy that's actually um, assaulted a member of parliament within the House, in fact, during the House sitting, uh, sitting. and uh, here we have a guy that's a staunch Labour guy. He's meant to be now in his role as Speaker of the House, meant to be neutral, fair, experienced, um, knows the SOPs, the standard operating procedures of the of the House, how it all functions. Well, during the uh, protest, the peaceful and, and uh, protest uh, this past Wednesday in Wellington, that was being headed up by the Outdoors Party, um, there were lots of people out there protesting peacefully, chanting and peacefully. But what did they do? So some of the ladies, they got some of these their, their protest signage pieces and just put them in the ground quietly, no problem and uh, not not damaging the ground and i've seen photos and footage it all looked pretty cool actually and everyone was protesting and that's all good then out of out of the mist of parliament out comes out scurries trevor mallard out of a side door in the front runs in amongst the protesters sue gray asks him the speech he ignores her and asks them if he wanted to address the crowd which he declined and he starts walking around the perimeter grabbing all of the signage pieces and chucking them at the people who they belong to and saying, don't put them here, it's not allowed, blah 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 And then he starts getting booed, and then he scurries back into his little mouse trap door, uh, going into the, uh, going into, I should say, rat trap, going into the, uh, into Parliament, back into the beehive. Now, what is a Speaker of the House doing, doing something like that? 
I've thought I've, I know I mentioned it the other day in my last broadcast, but I'm I'm just I'm astounded. I'm astounded because of the level of contempt, the level of contempt these people have for you. And me, I'm just an ordinary guy. You are just an ordinary. You guys are just ordinary people. We are ordinary Kiwis, everyday people. I've got my little girl over here. She's playing a a device. The other fella, little guy over here, he's playing another device. And my my big daughter over there, she's on the computer. Wife is doing some house painting because I'm useless with my hands. We're just regular Kiwi whanau. But you know what? We pay Trevor Mallard's wages and salaries. All of the MPs, you do as well. And why do they treat us with such contempt? It's because they think they are part of the elite. They think they are hierarchy people. They think they know more about anything. And they think... Sorry about that, guys. Just these messages. Oh, let's say there. They think they know more about anything and they think they know what's good for you and me and my whanau. Well, guess what, Trevor Mallard? You're not better than any one of us. In fact, God, God of the Bible, my Bible says that all of us are sinners, all of us need the Lord, and all of us are the same. Not one of us is better than the other. Not one of us. So, Mr. Mr. Mallard, speak of the house, I'd like to remind you that you are paid by the New Zealand public. You are there to serve the New Zealand public. And that can be said to all of our MPs. But I was just really, really amazed that Trevor would show such contempt for the people that care about Aotearoa, care about New Zealand, regardless of race. They care about our country, and uh, and yet he treated the people like that. So keep that in mind, guys. Okay, now I've had a couple of um, a few comments from people um, that I've looked at, and like I always say, everybody has the right to disagree with me, and this is the freedom that we're fighting for, that we want to maintain, that regardless of opinion, that everybody respectfully has one. And that it's not my not my position to try and force feed you with my opinion. My 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 thing is if I can present the information to you, you make up your own mind. You don't need me or anyone else to tell you about about anything else. You make up your own mind. As as a wonderful um, neurosurgeon Ben Carson, who I was watching this morning, said, he said we've got God gave us billions and billions of neuro parts in our brain that all connect so that we can think and think well. You know, two million processes a second. Wow, so God's made it possible so that we can think for ourselves, right? So let's do a lot of that. But um, but people have said to me, you know, oh, golly, Billy, you've been really hard on Jacinda. We should just trust her. The COVID health response bill will be given away. Um, let's just get rid of, you know, let's just get rid of this anxiety that everybody has. Let's just trust this government, Billy. It's all good. You know, stop the harassment <laughs> of this government and Jacinda. I've had about three of those, okay? Not many. But the thing that we want to say, number one, is, yep, you're welcome to your opinion, but the most important thing that we want to say is, that I want to say is, don't trust any government. Never take at face value what a government says. Even if I was in it today, I would still be saying to everyone, in fact, I'd be blowing the, I'd be blowing the whistle on probably heaps and heaps of stuff that MPs probably don't. But I'd be saying, examine everything that any government says about anything, especially when it comes to do with our freedoms, our health, the health of your children, and our families, our whanau. And so what I want to say is to those people is, no, I don't trust that value at face value. We're learning that we can't trust this government because of their behaviour, of sneaking all these different bills in. You know what they are, the 15 bills last week, the, the new bill with the internet monitoring and censorship this health response bill that was put in without any oversight and just rushed in at us, where now police can enter into your whare, my house, without a warrant. Highly undemocratic. We can't, we cannot tra trust them. We now, there's a health science part that I'll talk about to you before, before I finish. We can't trust the medical basis that they've promoted this health crisis on. We can't trust them. So our job really is to look past what they say, look past the smiles, and discern the behaviour. Let that be the giveaway item that tells us uh, what's wrong. But this COVID health response bill is bad, and, and my good friend Catherine, she sent me a, copy, a full copy of it um, that has been, been, been captioned and been summarised, so I'm going to post that again so that everyone can have a look at it. Um, so we cannot trust governments from what they say. And in fact, if you think about it, you know, um, millions of, of Soviet uh, uh, Russians in Soviet Russia were killed because they trusted uh, Lenin to bring in this great utopian communist government. 
millions and millions, 60 million odd Russians were killed at the hands of Stalin and Lenin. You know, same with the Com Communist Chinese Party when that first came in, another 60 million in five, five years. These are unbelievable numbers, and it just goes wherever you find find governments that are just trusted, they find a great way to, to end up killing you or, or trialing things on you that you have no, no, no intention of wanting to be trialed with. These are all sorts of policies and programs. So we do need to keep that, that question ask, asking going, and that's not a bad thing to do. That's an educated, that's a, an applied, critical thinking perspective. It's not, it's not conspiratorial. It's called thinking for yourself, and God's given us that ability to do that. Okay, guys, I know I'm speaking a little bit like a chipmunk, but I want to try and keep this to, to exactly an hour today if I can. Health science. Well, um, one of my most recent addition to my list of heroes of people that I like to watch is Dr. Rashid, Rashid Buttar. I just want to say that I heard him say the, the other day that his name is Rashid, not Rashid. He doesn't like that. He likes to be called Dr. Rashid Buttar. So I'm going to mihi to him and acknowledge him and say Dr. Rashid Rashid Buttar has been really blowing the, list, the, the whistle on the whole vaccine um, scandals. Um, he's also been um, blowing the lid on the, the basis on which this health crisis has been promoted. If you go to Trump's um, um, daily briefs now, do you notice who's missing from there? Have you worked out who's missing? Some of you will know. Dr. Fauci, gone. Dr. Anthony Fauci, is no longer in these briefings. Why is that? Is it because he's been exposed as as uh, saying in 2017 that he that that we could expect a global virus crisis to hit the Trump government in 2017? A, a virus? Is it the fact that he's in business with Bill and Melinda Gates, who've been researching coronaviruses and vaccines and own almost the major shares and all of the major vaccine companies in the world? Is it because that He's also funded the Wuhan virus, uh, the Wuhan uh, Science Lab, um, 3.7 American dollars. Um, when the lady, the scientist, the head scientist from the Wuhan um, lab started the research at the Fort Detrick bioweaponry um, science lab, then takes it to uh, Wuhan, where it's mysteriously released or escapes. Is it because he's been identified as propagating the, the fear and propagating the, the misinformation about what the actual virus is about and how it's come about? Is it because he's been working behind the scenes with the World Health Organization? And is it, has it been proven now in Trump's mind that this guy is a crook? Well, I would say tick, 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 to all of that stuff um, because he's nowhere to be seen. Even, that, even the other doctor, female doctor, Dr. Catherine Burks, who also works with... Um, with uh, with Bill Gates, she's no longer there hardly ever. I haven't seen her for a while, and don't forget that Tony Fauci also sits on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which is a criminal foundation. So why is our Prime Minister speaking at a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation event last year? Why is she listening to the WHO advice, where Dr. Ashley Bloomfield in 2010 was the was one of the executives in the uh, infectious diseases uh, area. Are you starting to get the picture now? This, this, as I said in, in, in my first broadcast, the, the, the chain of players and actors normally parallels with the chain of evidence. Okay, And what we're seeing here are all these evil Avengers. They're not Avengers. What are the bad guys called? Uh, I don't think there's a bad guys. Eh? Let's just make out they're the bad guys, which they are. So, you know... And all of a sudden, we now have Bill Gates wanting to fix up our infrastructure here in Aotearoa and invest in our data cloud infrastructure. We now have him wanting to do vaccinations and almost at carte blanche without any hassle getting these things going easily. But again, let's look at the relationship. We've got uh, all the relationship connectivities, as I've just explained them there, and we've got Jacinda all the way through in the middle of it all, from the WHO to the UN, through her, her time as the president of the of the Socialist International Youth Organization, um, friend of, of the Clintons. The Clintons, the most, even more so than the Bushes, um, war criminals and, and, uh, and, and dishonest human beings ever in government. 
She knows them. She's had private meetings with Hillary Clinton, as she has private meetings with um, with Bill Gates. All these all these stars of hegemony, these stars of criminality that she's friends with. But anyway, please, if you haven't seen Dr. Rashid Buttar, go and check out his site or, or his YouTube, YouTube. So Dr. R A S H I D Rashid Rashid Buttar B U T T A R. So Dr. Rashid Rashid Buttar, go and check him out. That takes me into the lockdown. Um, I did say I'm my, I'm still a little bit sceptical. Well, I'm still sceptical of of Todd Muller, the the new leader of the National Party. But I had a bit of a giggle today because somebody posted me um, some footage from the House debate around level one and level two lockdown, and I got to say that Todd Todd Muller did an outstanding job of of um, absolutely destroying Jacinda and the whole debate as to why uh, we are still in lockdown two when we should be in either no lockdown or at least lockdown one. He absolutely destroys her. Well, well done, Todd. Why don't you get your MPs then, the ones that want to bring van- um, mandatory vaccinations, why don't you get them to rescind and change their mind on that? And then we will take you seriously that you are serious about democracy and helping our, our country out. So good on you, Todd, for... Um, for standing up to uh, to uh, Ashley Bloomfield, and let's remember, Bloomfield is unelected. He is not an M- MP. He's not an, an an elected official of the government. He's unelected. He's ex WHO, and as per my my letter last week, he needs to be re- removed from his position of author- of a of decision making and authority like that. It's undemocratic. What needs to what needs to happen is he needs to be immediately removed from that position. And an independent group called the Plan B group, led by Dr. Simon Thornley from Auckland University, needs to be put in a position where they can um, they can basically create a, an agreed set of norms and practices that we, as public, um, are happy with, and bring in some independent um, accountability and and decision making around our health and public health, based on proven science and trusted science and and health advice, not this. Um, not this uh, false stuff that we're getting from the WHO and the Imperial College of London. Guys, I'm almost finished. I'm doing well. I've got 16 minutes to go. Okay, this is a um, this is a really an emotional one. This one here. This is about the Maori MPs and the and the Labour Party. I know that a lot of uh, a lot of us Maori have have um, in moving away from um, supporting the Maori Party, we then changed our vote and we gave it to Labour. Now. I'm trying to be as, as neutral and as everything I can about it, but I just want to lay some facts on the table to all those all those Māori out there. Number one, all of our Māori MPs are gagged in this government setup. When we saw the, the COVID health response bill be read in Parliament, none of them, not one, were allowed to say anything. In fact, we then had leaked in the public that um, a document, an email from Jacinda Ardern's office saying, not one minister or MP was allowed to talk about anything. If they were asked anything, they were to ignore it. Did you hear that? Jacinda said to her MPs, ignore any letters, any inquiries from the public, because you don't need to acknowledge it, because the public trust us too much. So we don't need to answer people. Can you, can you accept that for a second? But in terms of our Māori MPs, I've been very brutal towards them, as you know. I believe the Māori MPs let not only Māori people down, but all of Aotearoa and New Zealand down. But what I want to do, I want to give those Māori MPs the opportunity to, to actually make a stand and, and, and actually start speaking up about the wrongs that this government is doing. No, no, Dr Lance O'Sullivan, health is not at the end of a needle, of a vaccination needle. Health is about eating well, about immune system health it's about not having 5g radiated on you it's about living well sleeping well drinking loads of water and not eating rubbish food that's what the premise of health is based on not all this other stuff get vaccinated take medicines and synthetic stuff like that it's about the the god-given way of 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 rungua of using natural plants and natural things to help help us first and when that doesn't work then we go to the synthetic ways but what I do want to say to the Māori MPs, and I know that there's probably going to be some that will see this, and I know that um, um, that people will be talking to them about what I say, please, etu, please stand up, please be honest, please look after all Kiwis, especially the Māori seats that you represent, and start showing some mana and some integrity 
and start speaking up against being gagged because it's unacceptable. All right, guys, cheapers. Ooh. Agenda 30, just lastly. So, guys out there, people are still un unsure that Agenda 30 really exists out there. Please be gentle with them. Go to the UN website and find out. But once you read it on the UN website, un.org, you got to know what you got to read the words and then go and get an interpretation by them because they use very very cunning wording like social equity, you know, social justice, things like that, which all sound good. Environmentalism, which we all stand for, we all want good things for our country. But go to Agenda 30. Go to play, go and um, go and look at um, um, a lady called Rosa Coyre. Now Rosa R O S A Coyre K O I R E. She is awesome. She's got it figured out. There's a lot of people online that are speaking about United Nations uh, programs, Agenda 21 and Agenda 30, but she's really onto it. And she's in court right now fighting to free America from it. Um, and also, just thank you to everyone for all the feedback from last week for my discussion on Māori television about um, Agenda 30, because this is a real thing. It's going to affect all of us. I believe that Satan is going to bring this system in to restrict all our, our, our freedoms to control us, it's biblical Fano. It's in it's in Daniel chapter seven. It's in Revelation chapter thirteen. And uh, I'm going to be doing a, I'm going to be doing um, uh, I'm going to be doing some studies on that from a biblical side this week. So I hope you're tuning in and for that. Kia ora hine, kia ora hine, kia ora Anna, kia ora Francis. And um, we know it's coming. This this control system. We if you don't follow it and receive its mark, you, you're not going to be able to buy or sell. But what we want to do is just have enough freedom while we can to protect ourselves, our family, keep ourselves healthy without dealing with forced vaccinations, to also believe what we want to believe, to have those freedoms. Because I want to be free to be doing Bible studies, I want to be free to be going to see you guys and doing speaking about all these things in person. And I want the freedom to do that. I want you to have the freedom to disagree with everything I say. Okay? And... Um, and I want that to all have this, all have these things. Why? Because God gave them to us, and no human has the right to take that away from us, all of us. New Zealand, Aotearoa. In fact, um, Aotearoa ki te tangata, tangata ki te Aotearoa. And that's people for the land, land for the people. You know, that, and this is what this is, this is about. All of us, whether we're Māori or not, we're not, we're not dis distanced in, by race. We all live on these beautiful islands. We're all God's children, and we need to live together in peace and freedom. And again, it's so sad to see the whole thing with um, with, the, with the death of our brother George Floyd, the murder of him by police in um, in the U.S. Um, I'm I'm just so sad that that the left is using that as a reason to destroy all those all those shopkeepers' shops, killing innocent people. There's no excuse for that, and I'm sure George wouldn't have wanted that either. Um, so let's look after ourselves. I do want to mention, though, that there is a court a court case uh, before the before the judges at before the judge at the moment regarding three policemen in um, in Taranaki that 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 have been charged for manslaughter that have killed a or a um, a prisoner and their kid died. You know that's that's disgusting, and I'm sure that justice will prevail even here when we deal with those sorts of things. But I'm so glad that we in Aotearoa will have enough manaki for each other. Uh, and love for each other to 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 not allow that to to happen that way. So, Fano, just in closing, look at that. Ten minutes to go, and I'm done. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes I feel I feel like I'm I'm raving a bit, but um, like I always say, you know, present the information that we that I that I that I talk to you about. Go and go and go and check out the stuff that I present. Check it out for yourself. Do your own research, and once. Once you are, that's right, Sheena, make Aotearoa great again. Um, once you've checked out the information I've shared with you, because I'm, I'm asking you every time to not just take what I say, reference in, in Google, in search, find out for yourselves and make sure this is right, okay, that I'm saying. Once you've got that confirmation, please share the information with people, okay? Please share it with them patiently. And remember, calm, cool, credible, on a solid footing. That's how we're going to get people listening to us now just on that note um I'm, I'm working with a couple of people now to to confirm a a a meeting on this thursday night in uh, in auckland it's only going to be um uh, uh probably about an hour and a half from about seven o'clock to about eight thirty 
uh, so that I can get home to my whanau but on the way back from traveling down the line and um, so we're just waiting on a um, on a to confirm a location but I'd love all the Auckland people all the all the people all the whanau in and around the areas please if you can come in and meet with me because what I want to do I want to share some of this information in a in a slide presentation I want to talk about my faith with you and and talk about some of the things that we can do that that are that are peaceful that are point making and that are pragmatic that we can do steps that we can take to make this government take notice of us all so uh, thank you everybody I'm going to go and have some dinner with my beautiful wife and just want to wish you God bless. Take care, everyone. And I will be um, having a Bible study again in the, in the next few days. And this time it will be, I promise, about Daniel chapter 2, 7, 8. And if we get time, we'll touch on, um, on Revelation chapter 13. But loving the, the studies, guys, the Bible studies with you all, please keep tuning into that. Even if you don't believe in God or have a faith yet, please come in. Because I never used to believe in Jesus. And I never used to believe the Bible. And now I, I absolutely dedicate my life to believing in both of those things. If it can happen to a, a mongrel like me, there's potential for all of us and everyone out there to be able to be touched by the Lord. So everyone, have a great day. I've got so many messages coming in to answer. And um, have, a, have a great evening. Look after yourselves. Stay alert. Be vigilant. And God bless. Take care. Kia ora.